please read the jd don't go for an interview without reading what the company requires because the interview is giving you a loose ball you hit it if you give the right intro you the interview will get impressed in the first uh, one minute or two minutes so you mentioned the uh, the situation the action that you took and the impact that you created end of story that's it and talk in numbers remember these four things you can answer all the all the behavioral questions you look at the jd you see what the company requires you see what the company does what the company's ambitions are you look at the company's values you put that in your statement and you tell this is why i am the best candidate for your position so just be yourself be honest and um, uh, be prepared that's the that's the main way to be confident what is important is we need to understand that area of development is not an issue you need to show how you worked on it with examples hello guys welcome again with another podcast and today my guest is umar farooqi this is podcast 2 we had series 1 where we talked about uh, how to use linkedin how to get a job how you, to get your resume shortlisted some great tips from umar on uh, resume writing and this is podcast 2 but since this is podcast number 2 let me just go about introducing who is umar and how do i know him umar is a linkedin a youtube career coach influencer i learn a lot from him he inspires the work that i do on my linkedin on my youtube i take a lot of inspiration from umar he is also for his day job uh, the head of uh, hr business partner at food panda pakistan so welcome umar and thanks for joining If uh, Umar, you can speak a few things about yourself, and then I will ask you the questions I have for you. Thank you so much, Beroz. You you kind enough for that uh, introduction. Um, very excited to to be connected with you specifically because I've been seeing your work, and I know we have that uh, uh, alignment in terms of wavelength on what we want to do, what we want to achieve on LinkedIn or through our socials. That is to help people to add value to the community. so just a basic introduction i've been in the industry hr industry for around 9 uh, years and uh, it has been in pakistan um have uh, worked on different portfolios different departments across uh, top organizations in pakistan such as engro um delivery food panda which is owned by delivery hero based in germany and then previously kl electric as well graduated from lums in 2014 um and uh, my journey um is defined by how i add value to the people around me specifically because i've been working in hr so specifically it's around interviewing skills job hunt um uh, personality build up um uh, image build up in in the corporate world and uh, general philosophical touch as well in terms of how to lead lives and how to manage crises uh especially because we live in pakistan which unfortunately or fortunately every day is a new crisis um uh, which we have to handle that's why we are resilient people so that is a basic intro and i'm sure the questions that you have i'll be able to pass on some knowledge through my experience um so looking forward to it umar i must say one thing and i really that is another thing which really impresses me i know a lot of career coaches myself as well i claim myself as a career coach on linkedin on youtube but there is an angle of monetization that we all are looking for and i assume you have some of that as well but you have a philanthropic angle to what you do as well and i've messaged you before as well which is i really admire that you just don't use your forum for doing what you claim to do which is career coaching but there is also philanthropy that you do through your linkedin through your youtube which is just amazing like for me yes i donate money yes i help people out here and there but using such a big and important forum where you can just look into monetization alone but using that for philanthropic work is just amazing so once again thank you for that and i just wanted to call that out as well thank you and just to add to that because since a lot of viewers will be watching this so the idea is to help people around you kisi bhi means ke through it doesn't matter if it's financial if it's um, something else if it's about giving a job to someone anyone who needs help anyone who reaches out to you you can be late in replying to those messages but if you can contribute in the position that you are in right now because uh, that means that you're blessed if you're able if you're able to help someone so that is how because linkedin al- alhamdulillah has been kind to me have a great followership over there so 
utilizing that to help someone trust me even if you give a good advice to someone for 5 minutes or you help someone build a good resume or you help someone find ration for the for the month or you help someone uh, pay off their uh, loans or help someone get married it changes their life it might be a very small contribution from your end and you don't have to contribute financially you just have to post it and people around you in your community will reach out to support and that's the beauty of it that's the beauty of pakistan especially especially because in this country i have seen people go out of the way to help if they feel that there is a genuine need so my message to everyone is uh, please it's 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 very easy and please keep doing it just look around yourself if you find even one person who needs help start from your own house the house helps that you have um the people around in your neighborhood uh, where you work the people that wh- whoever needs help over there start helping them start funding their children's education because their children fees is not that much and that's how you start building community and that's how people build kindness and that's how we build a strong society so yeah thank you so umar thank you for this uh, wonderful introduction so now what i want to talk to you about is interview So on interview the first question i have for you is how should i go about preparing for an interview So once you get a call for an interview the first thing that you need to do is go and research the company what does the company if you haven't done it already what does the company do what are the verticals how does the company make money that's the basic uh, understanding that you need to have whatever information you can get from the website if it's a public limited company going to the financials just have an idea of what the company is doing where the company is going um because it's very important because when a recruiter hires you they're not looking for a person for if it's a permanent uh job they're not looking for a person who can fill the position for 2 months 3 months or 6 months or 1 year they're looking for a long term employee and they want to be sure that you have also done your research that you want to stay here long term you're not that person who just wants a job so that you know they can switch a job later on because they don't have any attachment or they don't have a value system of why they want to join the company it's very important to link your ambitions your values to the company's ambition and company value that's how you build a connection and that's how the you know everyone questions what does cultural fit mean cultural fit means how the company thinks a comp- think of the company as a person how does the pers- this company think how does the company function what is the culture over and then reflect it am i that sort of person and can i do that and do we have uh, alignment in terms of the ambition so that's number one if you are if you are not aware and it has happened with me early in my career i went for an interview i didn't know what the company i know i knew what the company is doing but i didn't know what the company is up to and what what is the latest, latest thing happening and i was rejected right there once the interviewer asked me okay so what do you how do you see yourself in the company fitting in the company etc etc and i was i, I gave a very generic answer in the comp- the recruiter was like so you don't know that we are starting this vertical and this these are these are ambitions for the next 3 years i said no I said it's on our website and that's when i realized obviously with experience with maturity i realized that this is the first thing you getting into a company you don't know about why are you getting in the company can will you ever leave your house and go to a place where you don't feel secure or, or uh, you don't have information about no So how can you go to a company where you have to stick as a permanent employee? So that's number one. Make sure you know about the company. Second, please read the JD. Don't go for an interview without reading what the company requires. So if you get a call, I'm assuming that you've already read the JD properly, and you are aware what the company requires and how you can add value. Because the first part that we discussed about your resume, you need to alter your resume according to the JD that is required. so please make sure especially for young professionals don't please don't just go to any because young professionals they have a mindset okay whatever job we get we'll we'll get into it and we'll learn that's all fine but please make sure that you have a skill set and you can contribute to the company so that's uh, number 2 uh, company values and then uh, the jd that you have um once you go for the interview um obviously the the there's a certain discipline and decorum that you need to follow be at least half an hour be there at least half an hour before and by half an hour before i mean you need to calculate 
how much what is the distance from uh, uh, of the place where your interview is from your home you leave at least one hour uh, at least you you follow the you, you follow the google map you follow the timeline and you reach at least half an hour before the interview because you need to go to the reception you need to uh, climatize to the environment you need to sit you need to be you, you need to be you don't need to be rushed up um, when you join for you know, you know you don't need to be sweating uh, and this these are real examples where people are just lost because they are late or they haven't calculated their time account. that's not the best impression that you want to give it's a very basic thing but it will just spoil your interview and spoil your image secondly make sure you dress appropriately by appropriately i mean a professional uh, uh, in a, in a professional attire in pakistan the professional attire can be different in uh, in the west in us canada or europe professional attire can be different in uae professional attire can be different you need to check out how the company culture works and wh- how exactly can you dress so for a tech company i can just go in my um, in in my polo in my uh, with a tucked in uh, dress pant or a khaki that will be fine probably but uh, in a banking uh, environment in 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 a in a holding company for example mostly people wear suits or mostly people wear dress pants and dress shirt every day um you need to know how the culture is like and what is acceptable that's for you to decide and also what is uh, the norm over there so these are very basic things once you enter the interview uh once once you enter the room you need to be very sure of the intro that you will give your one minute or the initial one or two minutes you need to have it prepared stand in front of the mirror be sure that when the person asks you okay please walk me through your resume please give a brief introduction about yourself you need that's your that's the point where you hit the nail because the interview is giving you a loose ball you hit it if you give the right intro you the interview will get impressed in the first uh, one minute or two minutes you what do you mention you mention your professional experience very briefly you start off with your uh, your education your professional experience and not get this i had this position i had this you mention your top 3 4 projects during your intro this is what i've done this is what i was uh, uh, this is our added value over there this is the project that i led um while working um, uh, as a um, hr manager in xyz company i worked on this project that uh, had 1000 participants that had 20 million uh, sponsored revenue uh, that led to an increase in profit by 5% you know you make an impact by the numbers that you say and the projects that you mention once this is done move on to your hobbies and your personal and in my personal life i like to um, i like to play video games for example i like to trek i like to cycle i am uh, i go to the gym um i play cricket i am very active on social media i like to add value to the people i do philanthropy anything give the human touch your intro i tell everyone once you give a great intro trust me if your hands are shaking if you're jittery if you're very underconfident it will change because now you own the interview and now the interviewer a lot of time the interviewer won't even get into your resume they will ask just one or two things but since you've given a great intro they will pick things oh you mentioned oh you mentioned travel where was the last place that you had traveled the conversation goes somewhere else you mentioned that you worked on a project regarding financial modeling and that how you contributed to company's uh, profits can you elaborate on that so you mentioned your best thing they that attracted the attention and you're talking about it or what else do you need so please make sure that you uh, that your intro is well prepared and that you're confident about it once your intro is done you need to practice and i think png uh, has a website uh, on png's website the specific section of how to answer behavioral questions because i remember from the days when i was a student i used to look at it um it mentions how or any website any, any credible website that you can find what behavioral questions that they can ask and how you have to answer it behavioral questions are like describe a crisis management situation and how you handled it Uh, describe a time when you had to handle a team and a lot of you must have heard about it already but these behavioral questions are the point where you showcase the way you speak the way you mention your behaviors and the way you uh, have handled different projects so you mentioned the 
uh, the situation, the action that you took, and the impact that you created. End of story. That's it. And talk in numbers. Remember these four things. You can answer all the uh, the behavioral questions. If you don't have an example, you take ten seconds, twenty seconds, thirty seconds. Think about it. That's that's not a problem. But you need to be prepared about. It. And most of the time, the questions are the same. So you prepare 10 behavioral questions, top 10 behavioral questions. Go on Google, find that. Just prepare those. This behavioral questions uh, always obviously have a, try to have a smile, not a very weird one that the the recruiters get creeped out, but a pleasant one. This is a feedback that I've always gotten. When I start speaking, my face goes straight because I'm so much into the conversation. <laughs> the other person like, why you're so serious? I'm like, no, no, no. It's just how I am. It's just the face that I have. I need to work on, right? um smile and uh, use hand gestures and be straight look at the person have an eye contact be very confident about the way you speak If these two things are done the intro the behavioral part third um, um this question that i always ask people that why should i hire you what is so different about you because the interview is also confused most of the time mostly not confused in in terms of if the interview has to look at 10 people there is a possibility the interview doesn't know who are the top 2 because of so many interviews and the recency effect is also there the first interview that was done i don't remember what exactly how the candidate was etc etc you need to be very sure of why the in, the company needs to hire you you need to be so damn sure that if you say the reason the company the recruiter gets up uh, at least in his mind and says yeah i want to hire this person because this person is very different what do you say you look at the jd you see what the company requires you see what the company does what the company's ambitions are you look at the company's values you put that in your statement and you tell this is why i am the best candidate for your position this is why i believe that i can add the most value and um, and that's how you hit you know, it's very simple it's just that you need to be prepared because if you're not prepared you stutter you start sweating you start jittering and that's where the recruiter also gets confused when you are not sure why you have to uh, be in the company how will the recruiter be so sure so these three things and end me uh, the, the last thing always ask a question uh, when when they ask you if you have any question because when qu- questions should be around for me the favorite question my favorite questions are okay so company's uh, ambitions company's profitability not profitability as such if it's confidential but what is the company plan to do in terms of this or what is the importance of my position in terms of the impact that you want this position to create for the company things like this that's where a recruiter feels yeah this guy is very serious this guy knows this guy wants to get into it but this guy also has like boundaries in terms of or this guy also has some a uh, sense of what this person wants to get into it's not like oh just give me a job and i'll get into it this person is very serious about what this person wants to do sorry bro that was a long answer but i have been uh, doing this for 3 uh, years since covid and for me this is a standard thing that people need to practice four to five times even if you have a great command on english or urdu whatever language you practice it and when you start an interview you just be like you own the interview Omar I love the passion you have for this topic and it just came out so well so thank you for that you know what you are also making this podcast a bit boring i was hoping that we would disagree on a few things uh, and th- we will have a debate but you seem to have kind of same ideas or thoughts that i have developed over a period of time i don't know if it's a good thing or or a bad thing but i was good. hoping for some uh, some uh, boxing match but uh, i think uh, maybe it comes up in the next question but so far uh, good and that's why i have a few reflections on things you said and let me know if you want to build on that or i can move to the next question later so one is uh, you talked about reaching the venue earlier 30 minutes earlier and it's not just physical venue it's also when you are uh, connecting online you know what i i had an interview and i was like okay i'll join a minute before the interview minute is good enough it's just that i'm ready but i won't click join so i had the screen in front of me and i was like i won't click join and i'll tell you why why i did click join earlier and i explained that as well what was going on on my when i clicked it took me to a different website where i had to download something first and that download took 2 minutes and yeah, then yeah. playing it took a minute and so and i was like 4 minutes late now usually when you're 4 minutes late entering in a room it still doesn't feel that much of a pressure 
But when you join four minutes late in a virtual interview, it seems like a, an eternity. So that's another thing, which is just join five minutes before. Now, what was going on in my head was I will look desperate. If I come early and show up early, they'll think I'm desperate. And I started telling people it's good to look desperate. It's good to come across as someone who really wants this job because I want to hire someone who really wants it versus someone who has an attitude, right? Who's like, oh, if I get it, fine. If I don't get it, I don't give, uh, I don't worry too much about it, which is not good attitude. I'd rather hire someone with high on passion. So I just wanted to add that build on top of what you said. Um, another reflection I had was on dressing up. Uh, or dressing itself, uh, the dress dress code. And here my, my thought is when you don't know, just dress up. It is safer to dress up. It's safer to wear a jacket, even if it's a tech company, but it's more risky to just wear a t-shirt, even if it's a tech company and maybe they're, it's a FinTech. So maybe they are more, slightly more collared versus just t-shirt. So if you are not sure, if you are, if you think there's a risk, just dress up. Um, so just to add to that, for me personally, even if it's a tech company and they wear t-shirts or joggers or whatever, how casual they are, I always dress up for my interview because that's how, maybe that's how I've been trained or it's just that I just see, I just think it's more respectful to make an effort when you're going for an interview. Uh, when you go for an interview, you want to show your best side, right? You don't want to see you don't want to be seen casual, even if it's a tech company and people are wearing t-shirts and jeans. When you're dressed up, you've made an effort and you you make a mark when you enter the room. Um, and that's that's my ideology. And obviously, people have can have a different school of thought. But when you're dressed up, when you've made an effort, you make a mark and that's the first opinion that the recruiters have. Look, this person is um, serious about the job. This person wants the job. This person let's see what this person has because this person is has made an effort this is in my mind i might be wrong i might be right people can have a different opinion but i've never worn a t-shirt or jeans in my life even if it's the, it's the company that i work for even if it's a virtual interview i wear a shirt even if i have shorts uh underneath but i wear a shirt uh i wear a jacket because i want to be seen someone who is professional and who respects the other person's time and the forum. Fully agree and thank you. Um, moving on to another reflection I had, which is to the introduction. And I loved what you said, and I say it as well, which is memorize your introduction. <clears throat> By the way, I think we should also have a podcast on uh, communication skills or presentation and all. I see you're, you're very uh, articulate. You communicate very well, and I think there is a lot to learn from you. But I usually give this advice when you're going for a presentation. I say the first slide or the first introduction to the topic or the first five minutes of your presentation, you should memorize it. Like it should come out as if there is without any, uh, mm, as if you're, there is, it should just come out flawless. Because if in the first five minutes, you imagine you're on a stage <clears throat> and you have an audience and in the first five minutes, you rock it. Suddenly you feel confident because people go like, this is the guy, he knows what he's talking about. And suddenly you start owning the stage. You did a perfect delivery for five minutes. Now, even if you stammer a bit, you move here and there, you expand and you don't go that right, or you don't stay on the topic, it is still fine because you won the room already. And now everyone thinks this is part of the play. So even if you are going in a wrong direction or a different direction, assuming it's not completely wrong, it is part of the play. And they go like, he's, he's a rock star, he's just, playing with his tunes and he's moving here and there, we will enjoy it. But if those first five minutes is, are a disaster, then whatever you do is just a disaster and it magnifies. And this applies to interviews as well. So I, I completely agree to that. One more thing which I wanted to reflect on is the in the introduction part, which is the personal and the professional piece. You know what? I've seen recruiters and I completely disagree with them who say you only have to talk about your professional. This is a professional forum. You just talk about your achievements and that's it. And you're the first one. And not that I've known many, I know a few recruiters and influencers and all, but one of the first ones who said, talk about your personal side. And it was such a relief because I really wanted to pick a fight on you on that. And you just didn't do it. And I, that's why I said it's, it's becoming a boring podcast now because there aren't any fights, which I wanted to pick with you. And the, 
the part is, as I said, they want to hire someone who's a brick in the wall, who brings in, in a personality, and they want to judge your personality because they want someone who can fit in the culture. I, I read somewhere, I'm sure you're aware of this as well, you must have read it as well, that culture eats strategy for breakfast, which is you can hire the best, smartest guy, and I said it in the previous podcast as well, you can hire Elon Musk, but if he cannot fit in the in the, in the the wall, he would not be able, or that person won't be able to add value. So you have to share your personal side as well because they are hiring human beings and they're not hiring AI or robots who can just deliver the work. Rather, they have some personality to it that they can bring in the office. So thanks for saying that. And it was really, made me really feel happy when you said it. Indeed, you have to show your personal side. Everyone wants someone, every comp- almost all companies want someone who is a human as well not just a robot simple cool now umar i have a few questions probably call it follow-up questions but additional questions one is you you did mention a bit but if you have more to expand on it which is with regards to how be confident in your in your interview you know what i read books i listen to influences i listen to your podcast i go like okay introduction behavioral interview and all but come the interview day i'm sweating because it's like driving test right I know how to drive, but suddenly when I have to give a driving test myself, suddenly there is more chance of me making mistake, and it's just because I'm less confident. It's like how how we how our cricket team is, or how for that matter any cricket play is. It's not just about the skill; it's about the command on your nerves on the day. How do you take control and command of your nerves on that day? So, so Barrows, from experience, I feel the only th- three things that have made me less nervous when I'm giving an interview. Or when I've spoken to people and I've asked them about the reason for their confidence. That's number one, being prepared. Number two, being honest. And number three, knowing what you want. When you are prepared, like you mentioned, if you know the initial four or five minutes, you are not scared about how will it start and how will it go. Maybe if the recruiter says, okay, let's jump on a specific thing in your resume. That's also fine. You will improvise. Uh, but if you know the, the starting point and if you know your resume, okay, all right, you know, it's just like another conversation. You want to ask me something, you can. Second is being honest. When I know that I'm not lying, the I, I just don't like people who are lying in an interview. If you haven't done something, if you and if you say that, you know, I've done this, in a, for example, in a behavioral interview question, you get caught up because in a follow-up question, the recruiter knows. Maybe the recruiter won't mention, but they would. nobody wants to hire someone who is lying, who is not honest. And when you are honest, even in your personal life, and when a person is honest, do whatever the other person can do. I'm honest. I'm speaking the truth. I don't need to be scared of anything. So that's number two. And that impacts because subconsciously you're thinking, oh, I have made up this. And what if this person asks me about this question? And how will I respond? Because, you know, I will get stuck. I'm honest. Ask whatever you want. I'm this person. And at the end of the day, you don't have to die to get the job. There is a possibility that the company is not right for you. I also want to mention this. A lot of times people think I need to get in any company. What if the company's culture is not something that you're looking forward to? What if the company's culture is very toxic or the values that they carry are not the same as the values that you carry? So we talk about the top companies in Pakistan or top companies in US or Canada. They have a certain policy structure and and a decorum and discipline and, uh, and, and, and the leadership's endorsement of how the culture is. But in a lot of companies, the culture is very bad. So it's a blessing in disguise. You know, people say if it's God's will, then let it be. So you don't have to worry about it. You just have to be honest and you have to be yourself. Just like in life, you look at you, you look for friends, you look for uh, a partner and you say, whoever is the right fit, whoever likes me for the person I am, that's fine. I'll be with that person. I'll spend time with that person. That's how I add value. So don't just be honest and don't be scared. And the third thing is know exactly what you want. Um, Like I mentioned earlier in the previous uh, podcast, be very sure what the company is doing and be very sure what the JD says and be very sure of what you want from the company. 
that's these three things if you're prepared if you're honest and you know what you want uh, that's the basic tenant of confidence yes people have issues for example in communication uh, but that's also a part of being prepared when you're prepared when you can uh, when when you can foresee what the, the questions that they will ask you prepare yourself and a lot of people they're not they're not very good at um, articulation or enunciation or speaking english generally but they're so well prepared that basic questions or the initial questions they answer so well and most of the comp- they, they, they're able to figure it out and if i talk just about pakistan the, the place where i live it's 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 the most companies culture is a mix of urdu and english urdu is our local language uh, and english is a professional uh, language that we use it's a global med- medium of communication so just be yourself be honest and um, uh, be prepared that's the that's the main way to be confident konwar thank you so one follow up question since you talked about honesty i think it's very important and i like what you said which is you don't have to remember because when you lie or when you make up things you have to remember right uh, but when you're not lying when you're not making up things you don't have to remember so come next interview come the interview after that you can just say what you said earlier and you don't have to really memorize anything but on those same lines if there's a question which comes your way and you don't have an answer what do you do so i don't lie i don't make up but then what do i do i can say that uh... this is something that i haven't worked on this is something that have, hasn't crossed my path but i'm willing to explore it so for example in interviews a lot of times this happened someone has asked me okay so have you worked on xyz uh, platform and i mentioned uh, in my previous experience i haven't but i can assure you that if i am taught within uh, a couple of weeks i'll be able to master it this is my standard response i don't know if i'll be able to master it or not but i know that the the principle the discipline that i have and how i function i'll be able to do great at it because i in my head there's nothing that i can't do if i give my time to it if i give my uh, um if, if i have the right approach so this is how you respond you don't have to know everything you can't know everything the interviewer can play around with you for fun anything but you don't have to lie and it's a point of reflection as well if in most of the questions you don't know stuff then you also have to figure out that what exactly are you doing or what 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 are your credentials that you want to aspire to reach to a certain position and you're applying so for example i'm someone with 3 years of experience in finance i apply for a position in a company the company wants a cfo okay by some virtue of god i get shortlisted in the in the or my friend works in the company he or she gets me the interview uh I can't complain if if I get rejected right because I don't know most of the answers because the level that the that the management is talking about I probably don't know I need to also reflect it that's a very extreme example but there are a lot of positions that you get interviewed for and they don't so may, it can be a point of being a cultural fit or some technical knowledge that you don't have maybe you're not good in excel microsoft excel or microsoft powerpoint or any other software and most of the jobs that you want to apply for that is a basic requirement so go and learn it so the next time you don't have to face that uh, problem um so yeah these both things so yes thank you umar uh, and i would say one thing which is uh, you, you're not supposed to as you rightly said know everything but what you want to project to the interviewer is that you can get the answers so i will not be knowing everything but i know how to get the answer and that is the kind of individual they are hiring which is when there is a problem because the problems that you've had in past won't be repeated but when there's a new problem do you know how to solve it and get the answer for it or not so and even if it's a skill let's say it's a skill which you don't know you know certain tool you know power bi but you don't know tableau and you go like no i don't know tableau i know power bi but you know what i i didn't know power bi either i learned it and i can learn this as well so if you give me a chance um anyways umar thank you uh, i have one last question regarding the interview topic and this is around self awareness and this is a very typical question that people ask me because i know it's been asked in the interviews which is uh, tell me about your weakness do you have a response any guidance any input suggestion with regards to this question so by normally ask area of development and not a weakness but yes uh, it doesn't matter whatever the language is uh, as as a per- 
as an interviewee i would probably say i have areas of development for example teamwork and collaboration i know a lot of people will think if i mention this then i might not be selected so um, but again for me again it's different for everyone for me i have to be honest um be, some soft skills are very basic that you need to have to be selected so i won't probably say teamwork and collaboration um or uh, adaptability i would probably say multitasking is something that i need to develop i take on a lot of projects i excel in them but sometimes i feel that i get bogged down with uh, deadlines something like that. and but i'm working on it in the past i have these are two instances where i feel that i've worked on it and i'm continuing my path to improve on it this is my standard response so what is important is we need to understand that area of development is not an issue you need to show how you've worked on it with examples and how you are you, you're self aware that you have it. you don't want to be seen as a person who thinks i'm perfect i'm uh, 100% right all the time but you need to be seen as a person who identifies who self reflects and who is willing to work uh, to improve thank you amar thanks a lot so this uh, leads us towards the end of our podcast uh, in previous podcast we discussed how to find a job how to get shortlisted in this podcast we talked about how once you're shortlisted how do you ace your interview amar i would like to have another session with you where we talk about once you are in the company how do you manage your career how do you have a stellar growth and uh, ace your career like you've done for yourself so would love to learn that as well from you but for now thank you uh, for uh, coming in as a as a guest and sharing all this uh, wonderful wisdom one last question which is if people want to reach out to you where can they find you and reach out to you uh they can reach me on linkedin uh i try to respond uh, immediately if not immediately then um whenever i get time mostly on sundays cool thank you much thanks for coming thank you thank you for inviting me